Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Kenny. Beautiful, warm day here today, folks. Perfect for us to bring to you some scripture and, of course, another, another beautiful dawn. I want to thank all of you that are praying for us. <clears throat> I have a very small YouTube audience. I have a handful of people that are praying for me right now. And I just want you to know, if you're one of those, I'm grateful to you for doing that. But let me say this about prayer. I would much rather have a handful of people. You know, the scripture says, let every word be established by two or three witnesses. If I've got one or two people that are sincerely, tr truly, sincerely, that know how to pray, I would rather, much rather have those people than have a vast audience of ones that usually will give lip service and truthfully, they really don't know too much about prayer at all. So you see my point. I'm grateful for you, for those of you that are praying for me. But I, like I said, I only have a handful, small handful that I believe are truly committed to prayer and they know how to pray. Let me say this to you. Most of the older, older folks that I knew growing up, and in most cases just recently, they're all gone, but those were the backbone of people that knew how to pray. Listen, I'm not saying that you don't know how to pray. I'm just saying that I would rather, much rather have just a few people that are committed to prayer and that know how to pray rather than just have a, a truckload, if you will, of those that maybe give lip service and really don't know how to pray. I think you get the point. I think you do. So I'm grateful to you for prayer. I feel wonderful, praise God. I do. And many of you, let me make sure you understand and know what I'm talking about. Many of you may or may not know that the doc has diagnosed me with uh, prostate cancer. And let me say, Many of you probably are maybe going through the same thing that I am right now. I will be making a decision very shortly after I go back. Let me say this to the doc after I go back to the doc. Getting sick today is so expensive. It's so expensive. Now, I've been traveling... I've made three, four trips to UK from my home and hit is about a hundred miles from my house to UK, the hospital here in central Kentucky, about a hundred miles. And it's so expensive. So many tests, so many things that you have to endure and so many things that, you know, just cost a ton of money. We're not living back in the 60s when things were affordable. We're living in the age now to where everything is skyrocketed. And the healthcare industry, oh my God, what a, listen, it's a big business. It's a big business. I could go on and on and on about that, but I have an appointment, I think, in another week or so that we will, we will be meeting with, uh, the surgeon as well as the urologist and we've got to soon come to a decision but you know what i'm doing i'm believing god i said i'm believing god i'm believing god so i'm going to read scripture to you right now okay in matthew chapter 9 verse 20 let me read this and behold a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years 
came to him and touched the helm of his garment. Notice that. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. I shall be whole. I shall be whole. But Jesus turned about and said, or Jesus turned about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Praise God. I believe in miracles. Folks, we know that this here was when the Lord was on the earth. And many people say, well, I believe in miracles that they happened because he was present on the earth at that particular time. Oh, but he said to his disciples, he said, I'm going to my father and greater works shall ye do. Greater works shall ye do because I go to my father. In other words, he's saying, you're going to be able to perform and be able to do greater miracles than that from which you have currently seen while I am here present with you. Do you get my point? Do you understand what I'm saying? Because he sent the power of the Spirit. He sent the Comforter. He sent the Holy Ghost. He sent the Healer back to the earth to empower us and to empower you to do these particular things and even do greater than those that were performed back while he was on the earth. The woman, she said within herself here, if I can just touch the helm of his garment, I shall be whole. Think of what faith that woman had. She was just an ordinary sick woman. It's no fun being sick, folks. I told you a moment ago that I feel good. And I'm not in a condition like some people are with this dreaded, dreaded disease. Many of them can't eat. They can't sleep. They're in pain. I'm talking about excruciating pain. And for the most part, that's the way the disease works. It could be in your uh, prostate like myself. It could be in your colon. It could be in your blood. I know people that's got leukemia, and that's in the blood. And, and just very, very young folks. I was talking to a man the other day, a friend of mine, and he had a nephew. His nephew was only 19 years old with you with leukemia. Think about that. This disease has no respect of persons. There's no age barriers. There's no, no discrimination here. It hits the older, the younger, the very old, and the very young, just as much as it would do anybody else. But this woman had a blood disease. You're talking about a horror. This woman had that type of disease. It was just a a massive blood disorder. I don't know altogether the Bible, the scripture is not that clear as to what it could probably contain, but she was in constant, constant bleeding. And she had it for 12 years, 12 years. And in one place the scripture said that she spent everything spent every bit of money that she had and only, only. She went to the physicians. She went to the doctors of that day. And after 12 years of suffering, 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 she spent everything and she was totally busted and disgusted. And that's the way it is today, folks. If you've got cancer, you're busted and you're disgusted financially. And many of you are heartbroken and you just give up. Come on now, let me say this to you. This woman had suffered for 12 years and she didn't know how to spell give up. Give up is not a word that I will even want to imagine or think about. Amen. Praise God. We have a Lord. We have a Lord. 
We have a God that's still in the miracle business today. And all we've got to do is believe and call upon him through faith. She touched his garment. And he turned around in one place, the scripture says, and said, who touched me? Who touched me? Because he felt that faith that she had. He literally felt that faith just bubble up within him. He knew, he knew that that woman had faith enough and she touched him and she was made completely whole. Listen, don't ever use the word quit. Stop it right now if you're talking about giving up about certain things that you're going through. God knows what you're going through. And I've said this before and i got to say it again. One of the greatest, greatest miracles that the Lord could do for you right now in your condition. Now, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what the circumstances are. I don't know the pain that you're feeling. But i got to say this to you. The greatest miracle that he could do for you right now. If you're lost without God and suffering, suffering, suffering. Perhaps maybe like this woman was. It's for you to give your heart to God. The greatest miracle he could give to you right now. Is for you to be saved. For you to be cleansed. For you to be washed and forgiven of your sin. Amen. 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 The little woman just walked right up and with a bold move. Oh, after having suffered all of those years, just walked up and just took her hand and her fingers and reached down and touched his garment. And that's all it took. It don't take God forever to do what he would, would do for you or do for me. It doesn't take him forever. I'm believing God for my miracle. And it don't take him forever to do it. I'm believing God for my miracle. And I'm telling you, he's able and he is there and he is available for us right now. Praise God. Praise God. I know what I'm talking about. God is able to do abundantly what we are what we are even able to imagine or think or imagine. He's able to do it. He's able to do it and he will. We just we've got to spend time in prayer. Spend time in prayer and put our faith in him. Amen. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to continually do this. Praise God. Yes, I'm going to continually to do this. I've got a lot on my plate. Yes, I do. I have a lot on my plate. But I don't know how to spell quit. What is that four-letter word? Is that what it is? You know what I'm talking about. Quitting is not an option here. Giving up is not an option. So stop thinking those negative thoughts and start praying and believing God for your miracle as well. Praise God. I'm going to close out with that in mind. And I'm going to show you another beautiful gun. Praise God. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Got to give him praise. Got to give him praise. Now I want to say this to you before I show you another beautiful gun. I want you to look at that right there. And I want you to look at that right there. That is a beautiful handgun and the holy word of God. Now I'm going to make a statement here, and I want you to look at that. I'm going to make a statement that you may or may not have heard about or heard in the past. But I believe, I believe, let me show you that. I believe that every red-blooded American citizen 
should know how. Should know how to use a gun and God's word. Let me repeat that again. I believe and I know that every red-blooded American should know how to use God's word and a gun. And they should be, if they don't know how to use it, they should be taught how to use it. Did you hear me? Can you say amen? What is this beautiful word? That's just an old King James Bible. Listen, that's your road map to life. That is God's handbook for life. That right there is used very little today by many, many people that confess to be Christians. And these items are certainly not taught in our schools. They're not taught in our schools. When I was a youngster, the Word of God was prominent in the school. Not now. Not now. You know, if you don't know how to use the Word of God, and you don't read the Word of God, you don't study the Word of God, you don't believe the Word of God, it can't help you. It can't help you. Our universities, I have to make this as a statement. Our universities, as many of you know, are turning out idiots. These anti-Semitic people that are Jew haters, I'm going to tell you right now, that's a disgrace what they're doing. And who's to blame for this? It's what they're taught. These universities are teaching ignorance, teaching insanity. It's insanity to say what they're saying and to do what they're doing right now across the country in these universities. The hatred is so, so, so evil. I love the Jewish people. Praise God. They gave us the scriptures. Yeah, Mary, Mary, and Joseph. They were two Jewish people. Praise God. Yes, they were. It's so dangerous to, so dangerous to let this hatred be spewed out. And let the people know about it. And everybody knows that that's the way it is. It's a heart problem. Mary and Joseph were just two, two young Jewish people. Jesus Christ was a Jew. Moses, Abraham, Isaac, they all, all, are written down here their names are they're written down right in the scriptures the Jewish people gave us the Bible the Jewish people gave us the Bible and I'm going to tell you the Constitution of the United States gave us the right to keep and to bear arms you have a God-given right to keep and to bear arms and to protect yourself. The Word of God and the arms that I'm talking about, let me tell you something. They are our God-given right, gift. This, is, this scripture is God's handbook for humanity. 
and I could go on and on and on and on. It certainly is. Praise the Lord. Now, let me show you a beautiful shotgun. And this might be a little bit longer video than you're used to hearing. But I thought I would throw that in there for you. Every, every red-blooded American needs to know how to use those two things. Your weapon and your scripture. You, know, you need to know how to use it. Take a look at this. Take a look at this. Wow. Isn't that awesome? That is incredible. I have to say this to you. I've brought to you old guns in the past. And I've brought to you some new guns. This is an old Mossberg Model 135 KB. An old Mossberg Model 135 KB. 20 gauge bolt action shotgun. Take a look at it. Look at that. Look at that vented barrel. Now I'm just going to briefly show it to you because of time here. <laughs> Get a little bit long-winded. Look at that beautiful wood stock. Look at that. This thing is almost, I mean, Lord, it's very old, but it kind of looks like it's very new. This thing, they started making these back in the early 50s. Yes, they did. Started making them back in the early 50s. And of course, they, I think they quit making them in 1958. They stopped the production of them. This thing is mostly a bird gun. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that bolt. Look at that bolt. It's a 20 gauge. It's a 20 gauge. It's got a 26 inch full choke barrel on it. Notice this sight. Notice that bead right there. Notice that vented barrel. Notice that choke. That, that is an adjustable choke. Mostly for birds. That's an adjustable choke. It came with that on it. Here is your safety switch. Notice that, how easy it is to get to. Notice how easy that is. That thing is solid steel, metal made, made to last. Absolutely beautiful. This thing is effective. Yes, it's effective. I've shot this gun. It's effective. It's durable. Most of all, it's reliable. Mossberg. Mossberg. The old, old, you don't see many bolt action shotguns no more. You just really don't. This goes back to a time when there were plenty of them at that particular time in the 50s. This thing is very reliable, durable, made last. Don't you wish they made stuff like this today? I got to show you the other side. Look at this. And let me show you this magazine. Look at that magazine. That holds two and three, two and uh, one in the barrel. There we are. And it is not loaded, no. That's one of the stoutest magazines. It's very, very, very strong. 
and to be this old, you know, that's kind of rare for that to be. This thing is accurate. Like I said, it's a 20 gauge. We're going to show you what it'll do, but I'm going to tell you, you will be surprised. You will be surprised. Good for birds, quail, duck, pheasant, turkeys. Definitely. Listen, if you get a chance to pick one of these up, and I don't know just altogether how it would be to find one of these or what it would take to find one of these, but if you get a chance, pick one of these up. Because this is a keeper. This is a keeper. And I'm telling you, you can hand it down to your kids and to your grandkids. It's made to last. Mossberg is known for making guns that last. Look at that padded stock on that. And being a 20 gauge, that is some of the toughest, solidest craftsmanship I have seen. Look at the beauty of it. Just look at the beauty of it. Listen to me, folks. I like to show off quality. I do. I like to show it off and brag on it. Mossberg, when they made this old gun back in the 50s, they hit a home run. They hit a home run. <laughs> and I'm telling you, you can't, you can't miss with this. You can't miss with this. 20 gauge, 20 gauge. So beautiful, so beautiful, so beautiful. Now listen, I could talk all day about the quality of this gun. Made in America, of course. Built to last, reliable, durable, versatile, accurate. I could go on and on and on. But we've, we've got to show you what this video, or show you what this gun will do. We don't want to leave that part out. No, 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 no. So listen, hang around. Right now, we are ready to shoot this beautiful old, old Mossberg. So before we do that, let's put one in the barrel. Now we're ready to go right out there. We're going to shoot about five or six times. So let's do it. what this old beautiful gun can actually do it's old but it's made rugged very very accurate built to last made in america it's an old timey mossberg now, i'm going to tell you something if you're looking for something like this and you are lucky enough to find it consider it something just you hit the jackpot in other words it's an investment and very much worth what you pay for it great great bird gun now i want to say this to you this may be your i mean you may have just tuned us in this may be your first time to watch us just hit that like button would you do that for us and subscribe to the channel if you like this if you like this do that would you and while you're at it go ahead when you get through subscribing to the channel share the video listen i've got a handful of people on youtube and if you share it if you share the video i'll have two handfuls share the video with your friends and with your family and listen i appreciate it so much thank you for watching you have a blessed day